Intel makes GPUs? What? Desktop GPUs? Uh, maybe you've been following this, maybe you haven't, but Intel has been making inroads into the uh, discrete desktop GPU space. This is gonna be their first step into that space coming out very soon. Now, they've already been making big advancements in their laptop integrated chips with their Iris, um, Iris XE. Is it XE? Is it She? Z? Whatever it is, it's poorly named. I'm going to call it XE. Anyway, they've been making uh, big strides on their integrated graphics performance. And then very recently, I believe in December, we saw some of the first laptops getting tested with a discrete version of this GPU. And then now we're getting news and announcements from Intel that the first desktop versions of this chip are coming out very, very soon. I wanna give you guys some of the details on all of this because for a lot of you guys, you're gonna see Intel discrete desktop GPU. Can I actually buy a GPU now because AMD and Nvidia can't supply anything? Well, this probably isn't the GPU you're looking for, although hopefully that is coming down the line. Let's hop into some of these details. Uh, so, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at a whole bunch of articles here and as my subscribers are used to, and thank you subscribers, you guys are all beautiful people. As my subscribers are used to, I will link everything in the description that I talk about in this video so you can take a look at it in more depth and at your leisure. Okay, so we saw this announcement, I think it was yesterday, uh, basically just Intel announcing that they will be offering a desktop graphics card as a discrete desktop graphics card for the first time in, well, the, you know, like modern computing. Like it's been a long time since we've seen a discrete <laughs> desktop GPU from Intel. They really haven't been in that space. It has just been entirely Nvidia and AMD. And man, it'd be nice to get some more competition. Well, especially just supply in that space, right? But what actually is this thing? So first of all, the most important thing to understand about this is that it's being offered to OEMs to build pre-built systems, meaning, if you are thinking that you're gonna be able to grab one of these at like Newegg or Micro Center and pop it into your system, that is definitely not the case, especially if you have an AMD system. Well, just in general, they're not gonna sell these to people to put in their systems. These are gonna be uh, a part of pre-built systems by OEMs. And to go along with that, we've got this news today that these are not going to work in AMD systems at all, and honestly, probably not even in every Intel system. What's going on here is basically you need a special BIOS. Is, is it BIOS or BIOS? In my last video, I had some comments saying, I say BIOS, but um, apparently a lot of people say BIOS. Now I looked it up and my computer, the like automatic voice pronunciation thing said BIOS and, and, and I felt justified. But anyway, what do you guys say? Let me know in the comments. But that is not the point of this video. <laughs> but the point, <laughs> how it relates here is you need a very special BIOS or BIOS to run this thing. And so specifically, and I guess this was originally confirmed by legit reviews, uh, that um, it's going to just be working on very specific um, desktop systems. Here we go with the specifics on that. So it's gonna be paired with these chipsets. And so that's what it's designed for. I think those are the ones that'll be pre-built into and they're just not really planning on this being something that you can plug and play. So what the only reason why this would matter since you can't really buy one anyways, I think some people might be interested in like pulling one of these out of a pre-built system and putting it in another system for testing and just, you know, playing around with tech purposes. And, you know, maybe somebody's gonna be able to get that to work, but it, it, that doesn't seem to be the official information here. It seems like uh, these ones are just going to be locked down to these pre-built systems that they come with. In other related news also, there had been rumors that Colorful was gonna be one of the companies manufacturing this card, but they have denied that, said that's not true. Now that's just interesting because Colorful um, has switched over to be exclusively making NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. And so if they had also started making Intel, that would have been kind of interesting and that had been rumored, but that does not appear to be the case. Although we do know that they uh, that Intel is partnering with Asus and some other OEMs to manufacture these. But what a lot of you guys are probably interested in is what is the actual gaming performance on this thing? And that's where you should be really let down because this, but only let down if you were expecting something that this isn't, okay? This 
is not a gaming graphics card. Now, could you play games on it? Sure, but that is not its intended purpose. Like I said, this is for pre-built machines and not pre-built gaming machines. This is gonna be to accelerate like, you know, workloads that could use a little bit of 3D acceleration or a little bit of computing process. Uh, maybe you're doing some really light video editing and you know, you don't wanna do that on an integrated graphics processor. This is to help with those types of things. This is absolutely not for your hardcore gamer, even a budget gamer, really. This is not a gaming card, although like I said, you can play games on it. Now, I can't give you benchmarks of what exactly this can do, but I can find some benchmarks that should give us a good idea of what to expect from this. And if you're wondering, well, isn't Intel going to make a gaming GPU? Yes, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, this is not that though, okay? So to be clear, Intel is planning on coming out with a gaming GPU, like an actual discrete GPU you can plug into your system, even if it's AMD as far as we know, that would be weird if they decided not to do that, right? Um, but this isn't that, okay? Let's just be clear. Now here's what I got for you. So um, this is a uh, benchmark from PC Mag, and I pulled this one out because it's a benchmark of the Intel Iris Xe Max. Now to be clear, this is a laptop discrete GPU, okay? The reason I'm pulling this out though is as far as I can tell, this discrete desktop GPU that they're uh, allowing for these OEMs to use in their pre-built machines is basically the same thing as the discrete laptop GPU, as far as I can tell. Um, and again, according to this video cards article, that's pretty much what they're saying as well. They're saying the announcement basically means that the same GPU will be used for discrete desktop graphics by the same GPU, the Iris Xe Max discrete graphics card for laptops. Now, who knows if maybe the desktop version would have better cooling or power or something to give it a little bit of a boost. But other than that, this seems like it's basically the same thing. Hey, my phone buzzed. I'm supposed to silent that when I record these videos. Jeez, how unprofessional, guys. <laughs> anyway, let's hop back in here. So to be 100% clear, why are we looking at these? Are these benchmarks of the desktop GPU? No, these are not benchmarks of the desktop GPU. To be clear, Let's look at, the, look at the charts here. The Intel Iris Xe Max in this Dell Inspiron here is the, des is the laptop version of this desktop card. And as far as we can tell, they are basically the same GPU. Like I said, I don't know if there'll be better cooling or power on the desktop version to give it a slight edge. Now, what are we seeing it perform against? Well, one thing that's interesting here is there, it's up against the Intel Iris Xe integrated GPU. So that's one that's integrated into the um, actual, you know, CPU chipset thing there. It's not discrete. Um, and then, by the way, look at this. Uh, the uh, integrated one is winning in Tomb Raider. That's weird. <laughs> okay, anyway, but what else do we see it up against? It's things like a low-end laptop GPU, like a 1650 Ti for a laptop. Um, yeah, getting uh, stomped on pretty badly here. Now, what are, what are these bars? What are the different colors? So the darker color here is a the game running at 1080p with the high preset, and the lighter color of blue here is the 720p low. So that's basically the just like, turn all the settings down, I just wanna run the game at a decent frame rate. And this is, I wanna run the game at 1080p with decent settings, okay? So, I'm not, by the way, um, I'm gonna intentionally not show you all the games that PC Mag benchmarked here, because I'd like to give you guys a reason to go to their article. I would feel bad if I just stole all of their graphs here, <laughs> okay? Um, I feel good about fair use if I talk about this a little bit for analysis about the desktop card, but I don't wanna steal all of their graphs. But basically what I want you guys to see is that it can deliver playable frame rates in games if you run everything on really low 720p. It can sort of run a game at 1080p high, but like that's if you're targeting 30 frames per second and it's not even giving you that consistently. And even up against a low-end uh, gaming GPU for a laptop, it's getting absolutely stomped on. And again, it's really interesting that we're actually seeing the integrated GPU version of this Iris Xe uh, in some games, not all of them, actually having a slight edge on the discrete version. Once again, this is the discrete laptop GPU, not the desktop one. So we could see slight differences, but it's basically the same thing. Here's Total War Warhammer 2, once again, getting absolutely stomped on by the 1650 Ti. And again, there's CSGO. 
again, getting absolutely stomped on by that mobile 1650 Ti, and once again, um, the, uh, the integrated one beating that uh, discrete card. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea that to back up my, I'm using this to back up my claim that this is absolutely not going to be a gaming card, although you could do some light gaming on it, just like you can do light gaming on integrated laptops, you know? Um, all right, guys. I'm really excited for when we actually see their gaming GPU. I don't think it's going to, if you want my predictions on that, and this is just, you know, what I think is gonna happen. I think we're gonna see Intel sort of competitive at the low and mid, uh, low mid, and I don't think, uh, we're, def we're not gonna see them going up against AMD or Nvidia flagships at all. But what I would just be liking to see is more supply of GPUs. <laughs> and even at that mid low end, it would be cool to see those prices come down because we're getting a competitor in that market, bringing in more supply and more competition. And what I'm really excited about is if Intel doesn't give up on this, where could we be 10 years down the road? It would be cool if we had three players in this game instead of two, and maybe if Intel could eventually pull things in and compete at the high end. That would be cool. So overall, in general, my analysis of this situation is I'm not too excited about this particular card, but I am very excited that Intel is getting into this space. I love to see increased competition. What do you guys think about all of this in the comments section? Let me know, and thank you, and have an excellent day. Oh, and maybe like, uh, you know, subscribe, like, all, all, all of that stuff. YouTube things. <laughs>